Greetings investigators! While you wait for the Edge of the Earth campaign to come to your country, you might be tempted to read the original source material that inspired it, At the Mountains of Madness. This was first written in 1931, but didn't find a publisher until 1936, when Amazing Stories picked it up and serialised it over three issues. Yes, it is available in the public domain from many sources, or heaven forbid you could borrow it from your local library, but you don't seem like the kind of person that is worried about saving money. The premier way to experience Lovecraft stories are the illustrated versions available as massive hardback books. Originally published in French by Braglion, but brought to English and other languages by Free League and Design Studio Press. These are a massive 14 inches by 10.5 inches and half an inch thick. Here are some regular games and books to give you a better idea of the sheer scale of these epic volumes. Do check your bookshelves before purchasing. Each comes with a dust jacket, which, as there is no page ribbon, is handy for using as a temporary bookmark. And when we say illustrated version, we really mean it, as each page has a massive fully painted vista that runs behind all the text. Now you get an idea of why these books need to be so large, to give the art as much room as possible to flex its gravitas. At 64 pages, this volume will be over all too soon, and the downside is you will need volume 2 in order to conclude the story in another 64 pages. At the Mountains of Madness is Lovecraft's third longest work, and almost four times as long as The Call of Cthulhu. So, splitting it into two parts definitely makes sense from a publishing point of view. Particularly as each illustration is painted by the same artist. If you want to learn more about the process, Free League Publishing have a 35 minute Q&A on YouTube. Although, be warned, this is a conversation being translated backwards and forwards between French and English. If you want maximum detail about this book, watch our comprehensive teardown of the original French edition of Volume 1. Volume 2 is just the same, but there is no guest written forward, and the biographies are identical. We don't want to show you too much, as the pictures will definitely give away story spoilers. These books are definitely expensive, premium products, which you would probably only read occasionally, but there is no reason why you can't buy them and re-gift them to your friends for Christmas or birthdays. None of ours came shrink-wrapped, so who is going to know? This makes you look super generous. And we hear a rumour that the next volume could be the Dunwich Horror, which would be a real treat for Arkham fans.